Well, one of the pitfalls of not having really accurate maps is uh, you take a route to a cache that you think is headed in the right place. And you, and you end up at a uh, Buddhist temple. So, I have to go back to the main road and try again. Well, there's supposed to be a cache. The hint says under tree. It has a photo. It has this tree in it. The problem here is that is a Korean military complex of some kind. And um, it's right there. And I'm digging around with a flashlight right outside their concertina wire. I'm not all that comfortable doing that. And if the concertina wire wasn't discouragement enough, they have sharpened sticks <laughs> along the edge there. There was a guy who looked for it before me. He didn't find it. So if I find it, I would be the first to find. And people walking by, listening to me talk to myself. I'm talking to you. You know I'm talking to you. That, that's my thing. That's my shtick. I... I, I I photograph, I video, I should say. All right, well, didn't find that one. So I'm on to the next one up this trail. I saw when I was riding my motorcycle in that there were a lot of military things around here. I guess they're all Korean military. Seems, seems Korean. The Americans tend to use uh, desert camouflage the Koreans, of course, their country is in a temperate zone, so they use uh, woodland camouflage. Well, there's a Korean burial site. Uh, the GZ for this cache was in the bushes there. Um, I didn't put much faith in it because it didn't seem like a likely place for it, but um, then I looked at the photo. I walked up here and I saw one of these cans. I saw, it was that can, yeah, I saw that can. Apparently it had fallen off the fence there. And my curiosity being what it is, I, I wanted to know what was inside. You know, how do they, how do, they do this? Uh, um, all they do is they pull the pop tab off, pop tab, I should say. That's all they do, they put a little wire on there. I don't know if that's supposed to do that. Anyway, um, while I was fooling around with this uh, can, Kim Ji Ho comes down the trail. I knew he was, I thought he was just hiking. And I turn around and he's looking over there in the bushes with a GPS device, he's got a something. And I said, oh, and I said in Korean, oh, I'm looking for it too. And so he came over and introduced himself. I had never met him before, uh, even though he's adopted um, more than half my caches, I think, that I've hidden. I didn't actually know who he was. So we talked for a little while, and he said the, the, the zero coordinates are over there in the bushes. And I said, no, my, mine are over there too, but the, the cache is not over there. The cache is here at this tree. And before I could get down, before I could get back down on the path to look at the tree, he had found it. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that was funny. We took a picture. Oh, here's a picture of us together. Um, can you tell which one is me? <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, that's Geo Kim on geocaching, if you want to look him up. He's a, he is a prolific geocacher. I'll tell you that. He's good. Well, but uh, he came down from he came down this trail. I'm coming up this trail, which means uh, there are no more first to finds on this trail. He's got them all. Just 
I got up really early this morning to come out here to get a few first to finds. I think I've only got one today. Uh, God. And, oh no, wait a minute, I got two because we decided to um, co first to find this one. Well, an ammo box under normal geocaching conditions would be a likely spot for a cache. <laughs> However, this is a real foxhole, and that's probably a real ammo box. Right, some more geocachers. There are not a lot of geocachers in Korea, and I have seen, I have talked to four already this morning. So, that's kind of weird. They gave me a, a hint where to find the, the next geocache. I didn't want them to, but I didn't want to say shut up or anything. So now I know where it is. <laughs> Easy find on that one. All right, let's keep going up this hill. Whew, it's good exercise. So this is what they were telling me about. That uh, the geocache that's hidden up here is surrounded by muggles. So. Fortunately, they told me where it is. Let's see if I can get it. The only problem is I forgot what he said. It's, un it's under one of these plastic ones. Oh, okay. I think he said it's under the brown one on the end over there, so that lady just sat down on it. I did find the cache. Um, the reason people stop up there, it's the top of the mountain. Was it 239 meters or something like that? And they tend to, when they reach the top of a mountain, they tend to stop and kind of rest and maybe celebrate. All right, I'm going down now. I'm going back towards my motorcycle. And there is a, a couple of caches on the way down. Let's see if I can find them. It's one of the nice things about hiking up mountains is when you're near the top, you get a really good view. This is the real sound. <laughs> this this trail is really really steep. I just saw a mountain biker going up it. He was huffing and puffing on this part, <laughs> and I thought to myself, "Man, if you're huffing and puffing on this part, you are in for a treat, because it gets steeper." Oh, uh, I, I had two biscuits and a mug of tea at 5.30, 5, 5 o'clock this morning. It is now noon or past. I haven't eaten, so I'm a little, little lightheaded, a little giddy. Probably, I'm probably a little talkative if you leave this camera on, but I'm not. Who needs... Who needs a bottle of Jack when all you have to do is climb a mountain on an empty stomach? Oh man, my legs are going to be sore. My feet too, maybe. My back, probably. You know, I am old. Uh, but it's really kind of peaceful, actually. You know, the, the place the place that is most like Korea back home it would be um, Eastern Kentucky, West Virginia, that area. That's most like here. And um, what if I lived there? A couple of red states. And I'm 
about as unread as you can get, but I'm trying to teach myself to overcome that. That the weight of the history of this universe kind of crushes that tiny, tiny, tiny little speck of late 20th century, early 21st century American politics, doesn't it? Yeah. So what do you think? West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky? I went to school in Kentucky. It's pretty, it's a pretty place. Nice clean mountain water. Ooh. But the thing is, it's most it's most like Korea in climate and terrain. And I know I'm going to miss Korea fiercely when I go back to America. So I should just go somewhere that looks like Korea. I can do that. And West Virginia has a song I can sing. West Virginia my mama. Kentucky has a song too. My old Kentucky home. Have you ever read the original lyrics for that? Woo! Go look out. I'm going to give you a minute. Go look up. Go Google. My old Kentucky home. Original lyrics. What did I tell you? Weird, huh? <laughs> oh boy. The old South. My mama's family's from the South. I have nothing against the South. I, I get pissed off at them, but I have nothing against them per se. Actually, I have nothing against anyone per se. Got me? Okay. This is not deja vu. Yesterday when I was geocaching, I came up here. Those were the dogs that were barking at me. There's a geocache I found yesterday right there. Ah! I know where I am now. Shit. I know where I am. Oh, God. I'm a long ways from my motorcycle. Oh, oh I'm going to have to stop somewhere and have a rest. There's a convenience store at the end of this road. It's only like a thousand meters. West Virginia, Mount Mama, take me home, country roads. <laughs>